Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett, the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic, and guide to all things cinematic, one of my favorite words. He joins us weekly, the films, French Exit, The Mole Agent, and Some Kind of Heaven. Once again, a very intriguing sentence. Hi, David. How are you? Doing okay, Jill. How are you doing this week? Refuse, as usual, to complain, but could, that's, well, given the opportunity. That's because I have plenty to say. All so. right. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will take over right now. Um, these are, are, are the, the first film is very different from the second couple of films I want to talk about today, because the second two are documentaries, whereas the first one is very much a fiction film, French Exit, and it is directed by Azazel Jacobs, who is still a, a fairly new filmmaker. Uh, a few years ago, he made a marvelous little feature called Terry, which I like very, very much. And I'm always in Azazel's corner because I know his parents. His father, Ken Jacobs, is an old friend of mine from my New York days. And he is one of the greatest of all avant-garde filmmakers. He makes non-narrative films uh, very much in the non-commercial realm. But interestingly, Azazel Jacobs is um, developing a real career. It's turning out to be a somewhat major career. may turn out to be a very major career uh, as a regular narrative filmmaker, making sort of art films, sort of quirky stuff. Uh, but he has a real talent. Unfortunately, I don't think French Exit is, is as interesting as his earlier work. But it's still... It's a good movie, and it's been getting a lot of attention, and it's getting a lot of attention because of its star performances, uh, especially by, by Michelle Pfeiffer, but also by Lucas Hedges, uh, who do turn in very nice performances in this movie. So here is what it is about. It is about a woman named Frances, an older woman played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and she, uh, her husband has recently died, and we know, we, we discover fairly early in the film that this is, we're dealing with an eccentric woman here. Her husband died, but she sort of left his corpse lying where it was because she wanted to go off on a ski trip. Uh, so she's somebody who is, first of all, kind of involved with herself, but second of all, somebody who is, let's say, not responsible in the usual sorts of ways that we have. So it, what she then does is she pulls her young son, a young man, played by, by Lucas Hedges, out of his boarding school uh, and brings him home. And they start strategizing what she's going to do next. And he is he's a young man and he's living his own life and he's trying to establish just what his own life will be like. And he doesn't especially like having to deal with his eccentric mother quite so much, but he's, he's willing to cooperate and he's willing to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to help her out. Anyway, what they decide they're going to do is to go or what she really decides they're going to go off to Paris. That's why the movie is called French exit. So that, because, Oh, by the way, she's out of money. Uh, so she's used up all the money that she was going to inherit from her quite well-to-do husband. So, so they're kind of, they're kind of, they're, they're certainly not starving or anything like that, but there really is no money. So what are they going to do next? So they go off to Paris where there is an apartment that she can use. So there they are in Paris and the rest of the movie follows from there. They meet people, they have little adventures. Uh, obviously the two of them have somewhat separate adventures because he's a young man and she's an older woman, but they, you know, they, they interact a lot and various things happen. Uh, it's a very well acted movie. I like very much the performances uh, of, of both of the leads. I was also, I'm interested in the career of Tracy Letts, who is a very interesting playwright and actor. We only hear his voice in the movie. He plays the voice of a cat, which may or may not be possessed by the spirit of the dead husband. Uh, so that was kind of fun. And there are some very nice uh, performances uh, in secondary roles. Isaac de Bancolet, for example, is really excellent in one of the smaller roles. Uh, so is, um, oh, very Imogen Poots, various others. Again, it's a movie that I found a little bit too conventional in some ways for me. Uh, the performances and the characters are 
bit quirky, but not interestingly so. Uh, there, th- this movie showed earlier, streamed earlier, uh, a few months ago as part of the New York Film Festival, which was mainly virtual this past year. Uh, and I said about this movie and also about Sofia Coppola's new movie um, uh, that, that they're, 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 they're the kinds of, of movies that Woody Allen used, uh, Sofia Coppola's movie called On the Rocks, the kind of movie that Woody Allen has been making for years and years and years, both both Sophia's movie and Azazel's movie are very much in that vein. Uh, they're sort of quirky and very urban, uh, and they have these sort of slightly eccentric characters and so forth. And I think Woody Allen, at least traditionally, has done this sort of movie better and, and more interestingly. That said, French Exit is a very nice movie. It's getting deserved attention for its good performances. And it's a good example of something which I will talk about more today, which is the idea, again, Michelle Pfeiffer, as I keep saying, plays an older woman. As America ages, uh, as our population ages, and hey, I'm certainly in there, uh, we're seeing more and more movies that center on older characters. There have always been movies that do that, but there seems to be more of them nowadays, and we'll probably see that trend continue and maybe even increase. French Exit has a very interesting younger character, Lucas Hedges, young folks will have a good time watching him, Uh, but it's also one of these many movies we're seeing nowadays that focus on an older demographic, and hey, what can I say? As part of that demographic, I have to sort of welcome it. So let me move on to our two documentaries for today, which again are very much about older characters. And I'm going to start with The Mole Agent, which takes place, it's a documentary, takes place in Chile. And what we have here, very, very unusual setup for this movie, uh, we have uh, this old guy, he's in his early 80s, uh, and he answers a strange ad in the paper. You know, he's a widower, and, um, you know, he's looking for something to do, and maybe make a little money, uh, and he answers this strange ad, which is that... the. This is what the person who who gets hired, and he does get the job, is asked to do. To go into a nursing home and just pretend to be an ordinary client, but he is actually conducting uh, an investigation in this nursing home or retirement home. There is a wealthy client who believes that his mother may be not being properly treated within this nursing home. So uh, a private investigator hired by the wealthy client has looked for an old guy to go into the nursing home and just do an undercover investigation. So there we have our old guy, our major character. And he is armed with oh James Bond-style tools. He has a pair of glasses with a teensy little video camera hidden inside. And he has a pen with a teensy little video camera uh, inside. And his job is to investigate and poke around and get some video and make sure that this wealthy client's mother is not being abused. And more broadly, to just sort of check out the overall situation in this nursing home. So that is the setup for the movie. Now, the big question is, what are we going to see in this movie? Are we going to see just, you know, uh, grainy, flaky footage coming out of his little teensy video cameras? No, no, no. The filmmakers, and by the way, I should mention that the movie uh, was written and directed by Mighty Alberti. Uh, Mighty Alberti has, has, has also sent in a regular documentary camera crew who are supposedly just doing a documentary about nursing homes and having a look at this nursing home in, 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 as, as part of their project. So with that excuse, they are filming our main character of the documentary as he conducts his little investigation. Now apparently, uh, the director of the film, Alberti, originally wanted to make a sort of a, of a, of a film noirish sort of uh, sort of documentary where we'd be seeing this, this infiltrator, this mole, uh, inside the nursing home and conducting his investigation and so forth. But the documentary kind of got sidetracked because it just turned out that the people that this old guy was meeting, the people who really live as legitimate clients and long-term residents in this nursing home, uh, they just sort of took over the movie. They turned out to have interesting lives, some of them troubled, some of them not so troubled, some of them very interested in this old <laughs> 80-something guy uh, because he's kind of an attractive bachelor by or widower by, by the standards of some of them. So the point is that the documentary maker and the documentary footage kind of got sidetracked by just the interesting other people who really are actual long-term residents in this retirement home. And so the movie turns into a very poignant sort of portrait of these various people as they interact with our own 
main documentary character. So all of this is kind of an interesting mix. On the one hand, it is sort of an espionage story, a sort of a suspense story, uh, as this old guy does his little investigation, armed with his tiny little video cameras and getting to know people with a secret agenda that none of them know anything about. Uh, but it's also just a movie about the, the about the retirement home, about the people who live in the retirement home, and what their lives are like, and how how this old guy who is our main character kind of gets involved with them as 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 the movie continues. So I found it to be a very likable movie. I can't say it was constantly sort of uh, uh, engaging, or well, it was always engaging. It wasn't always engrossing. Sometimes my attention wandered a bit. Uh, we are just sort of meeting a lot of very ordinary kind of old people, and there's not much of a thread to the movie except for the old guy conducting his investigation I won't reveal whether he finds out anything very dramatic about the old uh, mother possibly being mistreated or not but let's just say that doesn't turn out to be a determining thread in the movie but it's definitely a part of the setup and a part of the structure of it so I had a good time watching the movie I didn't find it all that memorable but it's streaming all over the place and again it's an interesting movie about something which I think will be getting yes more and more attention in film which is the predicament of older people who don't have a lot of family, don't have their own big support systems, and are kind of thrown back on relying on different kinds of systems. And this is an interesting inside look at one of those systems as it exists today in Chile, and I think by extension in many, many countries of the world, including the United States. Our third movie today, Some Kind of Heaven, Jill, is another documentary, and it has a certain overlap with the with the mole agent, uh, directed by Lance Oppenheim, but it's very much an American film because it deals very, very much with American phenomena. And this is a portrait of a very large, not retirement home, but retirement community in Florida called the villages. And it started out some years ago as a fairly small, modest enterprise, but it's grown to be very, very large. Way over 100,000 people live in this community. It's a very large community with all kinds of different homes and residences in it and activities in it. And the whole thing is set up to be a really, really nice, sort of a fantasy land kind of retirement community for people who can afford to live there. Uh, and it, you know, it's got just all kinds of games and social activities and all kinds of different ways for you know elders uh, to meet each other and to get involved with each other and to hang out with each other and to have fun with each other. So the movie is uh, a very uh, very extensive um, uh, look at this at this this sort of fantasy land for oldsters. But along the way, we meet very, very different kinds of people. Certainly, a lot of them are old widows and widowers who are looking for partners and hoping to find them. Then we see little interactions and dating and hanging out at the, the local nightclub and stuff like that. Yes. We also, though, meet married couples. Uh, there's one couple who the movie very much focuses on who are not having a very happy marriage these days. Uh, he, interestingly, for a very old guy, is into drugs and really sort of believes in stimulating himself with drugs. And his wife has certain problems with this. She's not very pleased with this. She's not sure where it's all going to lead. And then he gets in trouble with the law because of his drugs. And that causes a crisis for both of them. And that's one little sort of narrative, one little storyline that weaves through this documentary. Uh, and other characters, there, there, there's one other character who is very much focused. I shouldn't say character because these are real people who are very much focused on during the movie. An old guy who is not, does not have a partner, does not have a wife or, or, or a romantic partner, and who is kind of reaching the end of his rope. He is completely out of money. He is living out of his camper. It's kind of like that other movie that's around nowadays, Nomadland, but this is a real life case of it. He's living out of his camper, has no money, is desperate for some kind of of help. He needs a place to stay. He needs some money. And he's calling up people who he knows and has known, and they just can't help him. And he is really starting to think about ending his life. It's that unhappy for him. Now, Some Kind of Heaven is not uh, a very sad documentary all the way through. A lot of it is pretty cheerful. Uh, we meet people who are having a good time, looking for a good time, and hoping to have a good time for the rest of their, of their lives, whatever is left of it. But woven through it is also some pretty serious stuff, some pretty somber stuff, such as the case of that old guy and also that married couple I mentioned, uh, where the old guy is determined to have fun with his remaining days and part of that fun is going to be drugs and then he gets ar uh, arrested and we see him in court and oh, this and that and the other thing. So, 
Uh, some Kind of Heaven I found to be a very entertaining and engaging and engrossing kind of a documentary. There's no real storyline to it, and it doesn't really present a very in-depth picture of anything. But we get to meet some really interesting people along the way, and we get to see a portrait of this retirement community, which is it's kind of an interesting place. On the one level, it's a really silly place, where the people who run it are just determined to be pushing fun all the time. You'll have fun doing this, you'll have fun doing that. Everybody rides around in golf carts and it's, it's all that kind of thing. But on the other hand, there's a certain kind of poignancy woven through this because we are looking at very old people who don't seem to have any kind of deep concerns in their lives apart just from that longing for connections with other people, whether it's a better connection with a husband or a wife or whether it's a new connection with somebody who they probably haven't even met yet but had better meet in a hurry because time is running short in all sorts of different ways. So I had a good time watching Some Kind of Heaven and I'll say once more I do think it's a good example of the kind of movie we're going to be seeing more of. In this case a documentary about older people as more and more older people are interested in movies and our society has more and more older people sort of calling the shots and being of concern. So uh, all three of today's movies deal with that in various ways and I think it's an interesting phenomenon in the movie world demographics. So that is my somewhat geriatric story this week, Jill. For which we thank you as always. <laughs> I'm not going to go any further. David Starrett, Films in Focus, the films French Exit, The Mole Agent, and some kind of heaven. <laughs>